Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're gonna to cover some interview questions that you may be asked or questions that I like to ask whenever I'm interviewing somebody who's going for a systems administrator or a systems engineer position. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're talking about systems admins and uh, system engineers and what sort of interview questions you should prepare for, uh, what sort of examples you should have uh, to really ace your interview and land that role that you are looking for. So it really depends on the organization, whether it's gonna be a large, medium, small organization. The interview questions are going to vary depending on the company, depending on the industry, depending on what your responsibilities will be. The systems admin, systems engineer role is very vast. Uh, and it can deal with many, many areas. Um, it may not just be dealing with servers and things like Active Directory, um, but they may also have an element of looking after storage, your, your SAN and your NAS, looking after security, perhaps even network administration. So looking after your switches, your routers, your firewalls, uh, load balances, anything like that. So having a good spread of knowledge across all of those technologies uh, is a, a really is a good starting point. When I'm interviewing anybody, regardless of what role they are in, in an organization or what role they're going for, is somebody who is passionate about technology. At the end of the day, um, technology is changing so quick, so I'm always looking for somebody who is excited about that, excited about change, uh, excited about keeping up to date with what is cool, what is hip in the technology space, what new hardware has been released, what new software has been released, what new security hacks have happened around the world. Somebody who's excited about technology. Um, I, 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 ideally, I want somebody who goes home and just loves IT, watches things about IT, watches blogs, reads, uh, stuff online about what's happening in the IT industry. But as I said, in, depending on the organization, questions are going to vary uh, depending on what that role is. A lot of uh, companies, I know whenever I'm interviewing, I like to do a combination of what's called behavioral questions and technical questions. Technical questions are your standard, what is this, what is this, what is this, what is this? Um, a behavioral is sort of answering those technical questions in a behavioral sense. So an example of a technical question would be, what is Active Directory? A behavioral question in that space is, can you give me an example when you had to diagnose an issue within Active Directory's OU structure, right? So that's a bit more of a dedicated, pointed question, but also gives me a bit more of an overview of how somebody dealt uh, with that, their troubleshooting steps to deal with that particular issue in Active Directory. So be prepared for questions that are both behavioral and technical and combinations of the two. A good starting point would be knowing what your top three technical skills are and three technical skills that you are not as good at but you wanna get better at or skills that you don't have but you want to learn about. That gives you a good understanding of where your skills are, where your, your strengths in those skills are and perhaps areas that you're not as strong is but that you want to go and develop. We touched on it earlier, but somebody who is passionate about technology and keeping up to date is uh, to me very, very important. So I generally like to ask the question, how do you keep up to date? Um, you know, technology is changing so quickly. Uh, what do you do to understand what the latest and greatest trends in IT are? Uh, what are the latest security threats? What's the latest hack that's happened? What's the latest hardware software releases by the big vendors, you know, Dell, um, Lenovo, Apple, Microsoft, what are these guys doing? Uh, because you're gonna be dealing with all these technologies uh, to some extent, uh, so it'd be good to know what is happening in their world and what they're releasing and what new products they're going to be releasing. Can you tell me about a time when you were thrown into a situation that you didn't know how to resolve the problem? So we're gonna be dealing with this sort of stuff every single day as IT professionals. There's gonna be areas where you have had a particular system crash and you don't know how to fix it. Um, you've tried your standard techniques, your standard tricks that you know about, uh, but they're not fixing the issue. So uh, I'm gonna to try to gauge how do you respond to fixing something that you don't know how to fix? What was the situation? What was the outcome? How did you seek help? Where did you seek the help from? I want to know how uh, somebody troubleshoots issues. So I don't necessarily just want to know 
that they know the technology, right? that they are good in DNS, but how did you troubleshoot a DNS issue? I want to know the methodology, the process that they followed, how they troubleshooted a particular issue in various technologies. So have answers that are not just technical responses out of a textbook. You know, it's good that, you know, you're probably watching this and you've got some sort of a qualification, you've got a university degree, or you've got certifications in Microsoft, in Cisco, whatever it may be, but it's good to have some practical uh, understanding or or troubleshooting um, examples uh, that you can share with somebody that you are going for an interview with. Depending on the organization size, um, a systems admin or a systems uh, engineer may work directly with end users, they may not work directly with end users. If you're working in a larger organization, you may not even interact directly with the end user. Um, You may be just dealing with the backend infrastructure, Um, but some companies may require the systems admin uh, or engineer to work also with the end user. So knowing how to communicate something technical to a non-technical person, I find very, very, helpful. Um, Not just that, even if you're not dealing directly with the end user, you're going to be dealing with people in management. Um, Perhaps your your manager, the IT manager, the IT director, the CIO, the CTO, um, isn't as technical as you are. You are the technical hands-on person. So sometimes you have to describe the issue that you're having or a request that you have to purchase something new, some new hardware, some new software, a bunch of new servers, some storage, whatever it may be. You need to explain that to a not as technical person. So learning how to talk uh, non-technical is very, very helpful. I have a a general category where I ask general questions around DNS. What is DNS? What is a DNS server? What are DNS records used for? Give me examples of DNS records um, and how do you set those up? How does a computer on the network get its IP address? How does it know what DNS to talk to, what gateway to talk to. I then focus on more networking type of questions. Uh, What is the difference between a switch and a router? What is an unmanaged switch or a dumb switch? Give me an example of when you have needed a VLAN. What is QoS, Q-O-S? Give me an example of why I would need to implement QoS. Something that is also very helpful is understanding different ports, all right, so port 80, for the web, port 443 for secure web, uh, port 5900 for um, VNC, things like that. Something that's very telling is explain to me what is a server. Um, You probably deal with servers or you think you know what a server is, but give me a good definition of what a server is, what it does, what its purpose is. Are you familiar with server patching? How do you patch servers? How often do you patch servers? Uh, How do you communicate patch patching of servers to staff to let them know there's going to be outages. What is Active Directory? How have you used it? What is an AD Forest? What is a domain admin? What is an enterprise admin? What is a domain trust? Really just a big umbrella of Active Directory terminologies. Understand group policies. So I like to ask some questions around group policies. You know, if I need to set uh, the same password expiration for 200 users to expire every 90 days, have complex passwords, how do I do that? Group policy, but then explain, or have some examples of group policies when you've had to use them. What is the difference between a physical and a virtual server? They're different, different pros and cons. Uh, Explain to me the differences, why I would pick one over the other. Talk to me about virtualization. Almost every organization nowadays has some form of virtualization in the servers, in apps, whatever it may be, on premise or in the cloud. So think about technology such as VMware, um, you know, Microsoft with the Hyper-V, you've got Citrix, the Zen, uh, Zen app, Zen Zen server, those sort of things. I would almost expect any systems admin, systems engineer to understand virtualization, to at least have worked with virtualization, virtualization and explain to me what it is and what the benefits are. Nowadays, as well as virtualization, um, a lot of environments are cloud-based. They may not be 100% with their infrastructure in the cloud, but they may be hybrid, where they've got some on-premise in their, in their office, in a data center somewhere, and other parts up in the cloud. Um, talk to me about the cloud, talk to me about the pros and cons. Why would I build a server in the cloud or on-premise? What are the benefits of building a server on the cloud or on-premise? 
How do I do my backups? Are they on the cloud? Are they on premise? So really just a good example, you've got AWS, you've got Microsoft Azure, even Google now has their stuff as well. Uh, really good examples there. And it depends on the organization. If, you, if you're responsible for things like storage, um, backups, uh, talk to me about what is a SAN, what is a NAS, what is a LUN, uh, what is RAID? Give me examples of these, when you've had to configure them, when you've had to use them. Um, how do I configure a SAN to a virtualization environment? I get a brand new SAN, how do I configure it with my new VMware ESXi host? Backup technologies, you have to back up every single server, well generally every production server anyway, uh, in an organization. How do you do it? What technologies do you use? How often do you back them up? Um, where do they get backed up to? Why I would pick a incremental backup over a differential backup, over a full backup. So understanding the different terminologies uh, is helpful. So that in a nutshell are the, the questions that I'm going to ask a systems admin or systems engineer. Again, it really depends on the organization. Some larger organizations where you're going to be more focused in one particular technology. Let's say you're gonna be the server admin. Right? You're gonna be wanting to focus more on the server technology. You don't need to know so much about storage and about you know, networking technologies. So you wanna focus on server, the Microsoft Windows stack, Linux, uh, perhaps Mac server, Active Directory, those sort of things. But really having a good broad spread across all of these technologies will definitely help you in your interview. The, the key to me is communication. Um, if I'm interviewing somebody and, and they don't know the answer to something, uh, don't make it up. Don't act like you know what you're, you know, if you know that technology uh, or say that you have worked on a technology when you haven't, be honest, um, but then show that you're enthusiastic about learning about that technology or that you've learned, um, you know, you've worked with colleagues that have worked on that and you've really wanted to get into that. Um, really communication is the key. So being honest um, and sort of understanding that IT is a very, very large environment, very large spread of uh, technologies. You're not going to be expected to know everything. Um, so just be honest, uh, be able to explain as best as you can what you do know, have good examples, um, communication, as I said, being able to how to communicate amongst people in your team. You're probably going to be working with a team or by yourself working with end users. You want to be able to communicate. How do you manage your workload? How do you manage your tickets? Have you worked with ticketing systems? Um, all those sort of things. So that's really a summary. Um, there's a whole lot more that we can talk about, but hopefully that has helped you and hopefully that helps you to land your dream job. But that is it for now. I would love it if you like this video as well as subscribe to my channel and uh, click on my little alert there on my, on my notifications so that you are notified uh, when I'm releasing new videos as well. But that's all for now and uh, we'll see you next time.